So I thought it might just be uh, worthwhile, just you know, for my memory, um, more than anything else, um, just to kind of document you know, just briefly what I'm doing here with the DX5. So the DX5 is kind of like halfway between you know top end premium boutique style synth back in the days when boutique meant ten thousand pounds not 250 pound miniaturizations and between a, a kind of standard um production synth like the dx7 and nothing really kind of speaks that more than when you're opening this up i mean i've opened up a number of synthesizers over the years this one is it's just, it's, it's like a dream, you know, it's, it's like a synth restorer dream in some respects. So for example, to open it up, there are just four uh, screws here, 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 and here, and then the same on the other side. And then everything hinges up on these four nice big hinges. And it even has the cord built in to stop it from going. And this, I, I'm guessing this is probably the first time it's been properly opened since it left the factory. I mean, this is a, what, 35, was this 80? Usually there's a, some way to date these from the inside. Yamaha were quite good at doing that. Um, so let's just be conservative and say 84. Um, so yeah, that's, that's 35 years. Um, and it looks gorgeous inside. I mean, it's re really nice and clean. I thought, oh, maybe I'll have to hoover it out but there are you know the only bits of dust around the edges where you'd expect it to be um so this is the inside of a dx5 so at the uh, the top here we have um various controls so that small board there is where the sliders are so volume portmento uh portmento even um the A and B slider that allows you to balance between the two engines and the data entry slider and buttons. And then you have this large board, the CPC board, that uh, takes care of the, uh, the display and the main controls, the operator controls and so on and so forth. And then the CPR board there is primarily involved with the performance aspects and the navigation uh, so you can flip between all the different modes and so on and so forth. And then over here, um, the, uh, the DCT board is where you plug the cartridges in. So that's the cartridge information. <coughs> and that ribbons down to here on the main board. So you have the two boards in. Now I'm not entirely familiar with what is what on these. I believe these are the OSE proms down here. Although there are two other E proms here, and I'm not entirely sure if they are. So this is Tone Generator 2, I guess, based on <laughs> that nomenclature there. And there isn't such a marking to identify Tone Generator 1. Um, but I'm guessing they're both on the same board. I guess I guess these so this is my expertise or lack thereof. Um, I guess we, we see two sets of chips that are almost identical, one here and one here, and then these two, these two, these two, and these two. So maybe this tone generator one down this side and tone generator two down this side, that would make more sense. Um, and then I guess this is the main board with the memory and the processors and the EEPROMs here. And then you've got the battery just here. I was ever so slightly buoyed when I saw the battery because I thought, oh, look, it's in a removable slot, but it isn't. It is like good, good old fashioned DX um, batteries. It is well uh, welded, soldered in. Um, so that's going to need to, we're going to need to take the board out uh, at some point and replace the battery with a uh, proper caddy that allows you to swap the battery in and out as and when and of course here you've got the uh the psu which is all there um and on this side i guess 
I do need to look at the manual again. I did go through it at length last night, but I've forgotten most of it. Um, uh, what is this? All this kind of goes. Oh, this is the audio board, isn't it? Of course it is. Um, <laughs> so this is where your DACs live, um, because everything's going here to the uh, the output boards. Here you've got the XLRs and the, um, the TRS connections, the MIDI connections there. So I guess this is mostly to do with the audio side of things. So there you go. And then the keyboard stuff, I'm not going to detach the keyboard today. That's a job for another day because we have a problem with aftertouch on this, um, you know, as much as it barely works. So you place a lot of pressure and a sign I mean, a significant amount of pressure to the point where I'm worried that I'm going to uh, actually break a key. You might get some aftertouch uh, being applied, but it's it's not not great. So we need to lift that up, and underneath there, I believe, just in there somewhere, is the aftertouch board and the connection from the aftertouch uh, strip, which sits underneath the key here so when you apply pressure you get the um, the aftertouch effect applied if, if it's assigned so there you go so that's the inside of a dx5 and i i'm always um, slightly blown away by particularly with these older synthesizers when there's a lot going on how, how well it's put together and i suppose with a with a starting price of near enough three and a half to four thousand pounds dollars whatever it was back in the day this is what you've got you know solid metal cases with solid wood panels and these are the things that we're going to change um, hinged with safety straps built in you know everything here is just just lovely it's lovely to just sit and look at sad that I am anyway so the reason why we are here is to, to replace these. Now these are the original wood end cheeks. And I say wood, it's kind of particle board, MDF, whatever you want to call it. And it's kind of coated and painted in typical DX brand. But as you can see, uh, you know, this model has had a life and therefore it's displaying what we know in the business as patination. Um, the left side seems to be worse than the right side. And my original thought was, I'd love to just put these back to original condition. Um, as you can see here, if you look closely enough, and I can, if it can focus in on that, if the lights, you see the cracks in the tip there, that's just where the, you know, the, the plastic coating seems to have cracked. So it's just showing signs of age and a bit of wear, which is completely to be expected. And when I bought this, it, it wasn't even, didn't even bother me at all that these exhibited that, you know, it's what you expect. If you find a keyboard like this, 35 years old, that hasn't got some signs of wear and tear, it almost makes me slightly suspicious as to whether it has actually been used at all. And of course, like most electrical things, they like to be used and don't like to sit around. So yeah, there you go. Uh, and I, I must, I have to admit that I have, have been more than impressed with this since I bought it, there's very little that needs doing. I mean, the end cheeks really don't need doing, if it's just vanity. Anyway, talking of the end cheeks, here are the new ones. So these are solid wood. Um, I forget which wood they are now, but they've been waxed and polished. So they, they, they're really nice and smooth and they come with all the whole pilot holes pre-drilled. Um, got this off a guy from Revo, who's based in the UK. I'll probably give him a shout out in the comments. Um, yeah, so they're gonna go on and it's it's very simply, he says simply, there's a couple of screws down the bottom there that I think might be a little difficult to get to, but we'll, um, we'll come to that. And uh, yeah, it's just simply a case of swapping those over onto the, the chassis. And I went for the dark wood main, <laughs> The main reason I went for these is because they were available. Um, I'd been looking around and inquiring with various purveyors of wood end cheeks. And there was two companies in the UK that I spoke to. Both of them said that they could do it, but they would need the synth and 
kind of basically ended their emails um, along the lines of sorry but can't help you kind of thing um, they didn't even say hey how about you bring up the synth and we'll cut some templates and then we can supply them to anyone but uh, nothing of the sort so I went on eBay as you do and I found a guy on eBay selling um, kind of plain end cheeks so the same as this but in a much lighter wood there was obviously no um, they were just matte and, and un unfinished so you could do with them what you wouldn't have, but they were solid but he was in Chile or Chile or however they are supposed to pronounce it nowadays and um, he wanted 50 quid for the pair but then the shipping from Chile to the UK was going to be another 25 quid now if it's a quality product I'm not entirely against spending that amount to, to ship them over from Chile but I'm just I was just wary of what might happen if they didn't fit if they were faulty if they got damaged you know going backwards and forwards between here and South America is going to be a pain so I had them on my watch list and I kept kept them there and was humming and hiring and then on reverb I have a, a search set up and uh, I got a notification saying that there was leads and they were from England. So postage was actually free and they were only 57 pounds for the pet, which I thought was a very reasonable price for custom cut, hand polished and wood, and waxed, sorry, pieces of timber. Um, and if I have a problem, the guy's in England, so I haven't got to worry about, you know, I can call him or email them and get, hopefully get an instant response with no language barriers. So that's good. So they're gonna go on there and uh, maybe we'll come back once the job is done or maybe the next part of this video is me weeping as I've somehow inadvertently destroyed my new baby. Anyway, let's go and fit these panels. So, um, mission complete. And cheeks fitted on both sides. As you can see, slightly more um, screws to be removed than I first thought. You actually have to re remove this whole um, separate piece, the, the, the upper chassis here. And there's two screws just under there, two there, two there, and then there's a couple of screws just there and there, and that whole piece uh, pops out. Of course, by doing this side, you're removing the, the safety cord um, so you have to have a small child or somebody to prop it up from the other side, which uh, boy always comes in useful for that. Not so difficult on this side. Just unhook those power cables, take the screws out, replace the cheek, and there we go. So let's see if we can close this single-handedly to show you what it all looks like. easy as first thought. There we go. And uh, as you can see, that side just needs pushing down slightly, but yes, much nicer. That gives it a touch of class as well, I think. I'm still not 100% sure that I shouldn't have gone with the, uh, the factory brown. But actually looking at that looks quite nice so there you go new end cheeks fitted now i've just got to screw everything back together and test it to make sure i haven't knocked anything <laughs> there you go dx5 small upgrade so here she is back in place uh and all fully operational um <laughs> as she was before which is very nice gave her a little bit of a polish and clean up just a general uh, light multi-purpose cleaner type thing going on there so it looks nice and shiny um, but yeah there you go that was the main objective for today to have those fitted and uh, I think they look quite nice they kind of give it a DX1 kind 
kind of a feel. It's the same color, I think, as most of the DX1s. Not, again, not entirely sure I'll stick with them. Um, maybe in the future I'll, I don't know, we'll see. I might just forget about it and be happy and be done with them. Um, but there you go, nice kind of very affordable little upgrade to the system. And uh, now we just need to tackle a few more uh, tiny little things, the, the biggest of which is the aftertouch. So I need to find, I, I believe it's the aftertouch strip that needs replacing. So that doesn't look too difficult looking at the service manual. It doesn't look too difficult at all. Um, and then there are just a few surface marks like this one that you see here. And there's another one you can just about to see there. And another one just up here. Unfortunately, that one has gone through the screen, silk screen printing. So that's probably going to mean that if I want to do this properly, um, it means stripping it back and uh, redoing the silk screen. Something I'm not familiar with, so I, I need to speak to some people who know about that. But there you go. One slightly restored Yamaha DX5 with its all new wood, solid wood cheeks and a nice bit of a spruce up. And that's how you spend New Year's Eve afternoon. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, like, subscribe, follow, all the usual gumph and have a happy new year. And we'll see you in 2020 when hopefully there'll be more of this DX stuff to come along with more Fairlight. Happy New Year, everyone. Bye-bye.